Today's video, I'm gonna give buyers my top seven tips and advice before buying a house in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Let's get started right now. All right, our next topic is gonna to be flooring. Most people, when they walk into a home, the first thing they notice is what? What type of floors are in a home? You're gonna see carpet. You're gonna see tile, while there's different grades of tile, you have ceramic tile, you have porcelain tile, there's also travertine, you're gonna have laminate wood floors, and you're gonna have engineered hardwood, and then you will find real hardwood in some homes. But generally, when it comes to the builders, they're gonna offer you a few options. A lot of the entry, gate, entry level or entry grade builders, as I call them, which are gonna be on the lower price point, they're gonna come with carpet or ceramic tile flooring. They're not gonna offer you engineered hardwood. They're not gonna offer you porcelain flooring. And if they do, that's an upgrade. I'm not a fan of ceramic and I'm not a fan of carpet, but if I had to choose between ceramic and carpet, I probably would go with carpet. The reason why, carpet is easy to rip out and redo the way you want. Kitchen is actually very nice. All right, another important thing, which is the focal point of most homes is gonna be your kitchen. And part of this video is helping buyers understand the difference between kitchen cabinets from one or the other. Now, I can't go into full detail over the next hour of the difference of material, but there are a lot of differences that builders use to keep their costs down when building new construction. There are the higher end builders or luxury builders that will install luxury or high-end wood cabinets. Now, one of the popular cabinets a lot of builders are using is what's called is a thermofoil cabinet. Thermofoil cabinets are very unique to where the manufacturer takes a vinyl that's heated and pressurized onto it, what they call an MDF core material, which is gonna be the door of the cabinet. It comes in many styles, many decorative finishes, and many colors. It's also the least inexpensive, in my opinion, when ordering or choosing kitchen cabinets. You also have real wood cabinets, which everybody always says real wood cabinets. Well, there's different grades of real wood cabinets as well. So it is best when you're looking at a home, especially brand new construction or a resale home, Find out the type of cabinets. Ideally, if you can get a home that has real wood cabinets, those are gonna last way longer than the less inexpensive thermofoil cabinets or the compressed particle board style doors that over time, moisture will make them fall apart is the best way to put it. All right, let's talk countertops. And what I mean by countertops, I mean for kitchen countertops and the bathroom countertops. There's actually roughly about 10 different types of countertops. If you were to remodel your own home, you could choose between an abundance of different countertops. But when you're working with builders, they usually only offer buyers three, four, maybe five the three to four most common that you're gonna see from builders are gonna be a Formica countertop or what we call a laminate countertop, which will be the least inexpensive. Next, you're gonna have granite. Everybody knows what granite is, so I don't gonna explain that further. You also have Corian, you have quartz, and you also have marble. Um, higher end builders will offer better choices or higher end finishes. So when you're looking at a kitchen, pay attention. A lot of these countertops, especially the Formicas, look like granite. They look like nicer materials. Even I was fooled years ago when we signed a contract because I forgot to double check. So when you're out looking at homes, again, take notes and make sure you make notes of exactly the type of countertops because this really makes it a difference in a decision factor when you to go write an offer or decide to choose a builder to sign a contract to build that new home. Now, another one of my pet peeves when I go into these new construction homes is when the builders, especially right now, are going super cheap in the bathrooms. And what do I mean by super cheap? They look nice, 
a lot of the builders, especially on the lower grade or lower price points, install what I call is a one-piece tub shower combo. So going back to this bathroom, if you're gonna remodel it, keep in mind this is a one-piece tub and shower. So this is not tile. This is a plastic insert. It's gonna be a plastic, what looks like a shower with a tub or fiberglass that goes in place of what would be a tub and tile like you would think in most houses. Now, there's advantages to it and disadvantages. The biggest disadvantage I have is that the average buyer doesn't notice it. They look at it, think it's tile, and they turn around, they look at everything else, and when you make an offer on a house, you're like, oh, the bathroom was brand new, it looked beautiful, but you can push the walls in, the plastic in, the fiberglass in, in most cases. Now, it is easy to rip it out compared to demolishing a tile bathroom, an old cast iron tub or a fiberglass tub. So that is something to look at because again, to redo a bathroom is not gonna be cheap. Also, it's a time issue right now in 2021 that it's hard to find people or good quality contractors that can get the job done within the next two, three months, maybe four months. So when you're in a bathroom, look at the tub shower combo. Here's a picture of a one piece tub shower. Next thing when you're looking at the bathroom, look at the flooring, look at the cabinet, look in the countertop. The, the bathroom cabinets and countertops, that's an easy fix or replacement down the road. Windows, windows, windows. What window is better when building a house or buying a house here in Port St. Lucie, Florida? And this really works for anywhere in South Florida. So a lot of builders use what's called as an energy efficient window. In my opinion, that's gonna be the cheapest window that they can install that is up to this codes of the county, city, or the area they're building in. Now, there's different grades of windows. You have the cheaper energy efficient windows that a lot of builders use. You have hurricane impact rated windows. And then there's also higher quality hurricane impact rated windows. Now, if you have the energy efficient windows, they're not going to be hurricane rated for insurance reasons. Also, the glass is so thin that I can bet you I could take this phone and throw it through the glass and shatter it. Whereas a hurricane impact window, if you've ever experienced, or if you're ever out showing properties or seeing properties with me, I'm gonna point out the difference in banging on an energy efficient window versus banging on something solid like a hurricane impact window energy efficient windows which are going to be these windows here i don't know if you can really hear this hurricane impact windows are not going to sound like that so just keep that in mind so what you got to really consider and determine is do you want to put hurricane shutters up and undo these bolts and screws even though it's not that hard to do it's something to consider. Now, there is a price point difference here depending on the window. Now, going back to the energy efficient windows, when the builder puts in the cheaper grade energy efficient windows, they then have to put some type of shutters or hurricane protection on the outside of the house. 99% of all builders, because it's more cost effective, are gonna put in the metal panel shutters. Now, in my opinion, the better grade windows are gonna offer more advantages than just hurricane protection. The hurricane impact windows, the really thick ones, they're gonna block out a lot of the noise from the outside. They're gonna be much more energy efficient, in my opinion, than the basic energy efficient windows that a lot of the builders install. So when you're looking at a home, make notes. If you're not using me as your realtor, Pay attention to that to make sure you know what you're buying because not everybody wants to put up hurricane shutters last minute when you can't find the, the wing nuts, the bolts, you're freaking out, and then you have to start drilling holes in the concrete 
to put plywood up because you weren't prepared. Get impact windows installed or buy a home that has hurricane impact windows would be my suggestion for you. Another thing to consider about this home is that it has the covered lanai area, patio area. Some of the builders don't include the covered area. That's a cost saving for a builder. So just remember that. That's something to consider when you're looking at home. To do that, you're probably talking seven to $10,000, maybe more than that right now with material costs being so high. Another thing you may or may not notice when you're looking at homes, a lot of homes have what's called a covered lanai, which is generally on the back portion of the property. And it's gonna be a covered area either below the existing roof line or an extension from the house into the backyard. There's so many different ways that builders can do it. Um, it is an expensive job that if a house did not have it, it's expensive to add one on. A lot of people in that scenario, if it doesn't have a poured concrete slab, they'll get a poured con concrete slab and then they'll do what's called just a screened in patio. So that's something too, when you're looking at houses and you see a house that's a four bedroom, three bath, 2,400 square feet, one house is priced at 440, one's at 450, and you're trying to figure out what the difference is. When you go back through the rest of this video, you'll, you can start pinpointing where the difference in value is on each home. But a lanai, it's expensive. You could be 15, 20, $30,000 to add a lanai in the back of your property, depending on exactly what you do. Now, in Port St. Lucie, all the lot sizes are what they call a quarter acre. Generally, they are 10,000 square feet, which is considered to be a builder's quarter acre. Now, a lot of people wanna fence in their backyard and they don't think it's expensive. Now, recently I got quotes which are newer prices for today later in 2021 we're in we're november 5th the day of this video so in, to install a chain link fence depending on the builder or the contractor you're looking about 24 dollars a linear foot which for every foot or the length of the fence is 24 dollars. so i'll make it simple Let's say that you have two sides going down the side of the property on the back portion, and let's say you got 60 feet on each side. That's 120 feet. Then you have the back of the property or the width, and let's say that's 100 feet. So now you have 220 feet of fencing. So at $30, you're at $6,600 to do a 220 feet of fence. So when you're looking at a house and you see that fence, that nice white fence, that's plastic or a, you know, like a wood fence, keep in mind, those fences are expensive to have them installed. They're definitely worth more money if you're making an offer on a house. Feel free if you want to install your own fence. It's hard work, it takes time. You gotta make sure everything's level properly. So. When you're looking at a home, that's something else to consider that adds value. I really hope this video offered you some valuable information and great advice before purchasing a home in Port St. Lucie, Florida. If you have any questions about buying or selling real estate in Port St. Lucie, Florida or the surrounding areas, all my contact information will be in the description below and I look forward to hearing from you.